Fenris talking. Isengard has Merke. Second um, solo album. Recorded from uh, May 94 until March 95. Not sure if it was intended to be a full album or... I mean, um, I quit my um, lines, or cut the lines to, to Peaceful Records at the time, so I guess I was always talking to Satyr and he was into and supportive of uh, the Isengard stuff from the get-go. He'd heard the first album, so really possible that we were talking about just, you know, I was continuing to, to, to make songs and then it would be round up as an album eventually. If you call this folk metal, it's just rather decent, not so silly and uh, spastic and merry and jumbled. Again, when I'm talking about solo albums, you just you just see other artists singing and then just hiring in musicians, having help in the studio, all that bang. Well, Isengard started with a demo in 1989, where I played everything, made every song, uh, and I also recorded and engineered the whole thing. And it's the same thing with this album and also the first Isengard album. Uh, it's a real solo like it's all me even the studio engineering and the re recording techniques everything that's why it sounds so scruffy <laughs> The album cover was a photo taken by Satyr on a trip he set up for us in um, September of 94 uh, to go to Pilarguri Toppen, also known from the seminal folk album uh, from the Norwegian band called Folk from the 70s. And uh, that's really my hard line when it comes to folk rock. It it's absolutely fantastic. Folk rock from the 60s and 70s, great. Folk rock, great. Folk metal should, in most cases, be most cases be deleted. I think it's uh, it's a horrible form of music, actually. And I might have contributed to that. I might also have contributed to make folk some cool or decent folk metal songs that aren't spastic and then merry and uh, and all that junk that came later on in the in the 90s. I, uh, I reckon Skyclad was the first uh, folk metal act and Isengard was probably the second. I don't count the Battery Viking albums as that is a, a style on its own. But what this track is inspired by? Uh, Kind of beats me. Probably, probably some Bathory-ish. Um, yeah, definitely Bathory-ish. But then with clear vocals. Then there were no more days. This is Aldran from the Dark Guard. Thanks, man. I 
actually I really enjoy these folkish tunes way more than the folkish ones on, on the Winter Skugge, the first Isengard album. Then there's a, a little skit here, a little new traditional chant. <laughs> as it were, taken from uh, a lyric book from Norwegian uh, poets, so no reprinting of those. A song that's really akin to the stuff on the first Isengard album, or Isengard, as some would pronounce this band name. <laughs> Probably the first song recorded for, for this uh, release. As usually it's recorded on Necrohell Studio, the studio uh, that the guys from Valhall bought, mini studio, four tracks. They bought it in 87 and I started lending it in, in 89 and recorded on it until, yeah, 1995. Probably the, the, f the, the, the freshest song on, on this <laughs> release or, uh, release or um, the newest one was the last one I ever recorded myself on, on that studio. Problem. As usual, the, uh, the technique of, of uh, doing a solo project like this is I have to make the songs first on uh, guitar um, and then I have to memorize it in my head uh, as I do the uh, drums first. Drums should always be first when doing solo stuff like this. Drums should always be first. Anyway, never play drums after the guitars or something like that. That's just plain stupid and doesn't work. Then I just have to do the uh, the drums, and when the drum track is uh, is laid down, then you know just do the guitars and the bass and the vocals. Usually I have some beers when I uh, do the vocals, and no beers on uh, on the other instruments. I'm having a beer now, as it were. Yep. Uh, typical sort of mid riff, mid part riff, that middle part riff, that Storm of Evil, the song from Winter Skugge has. But here with some synthesizers as well, making it a bit more epic. Quite enjoyable, actually. How I fitted all those things, even the synthesizer, into four tracks, I actually can't tell you. <laughs> Don't remember. Don't 
That is um, pure drama when you sing off key like that just to enhance the effects and the, the vibe. But many times there have been like playing mistakes that are of course not on purpose in, in Dark Knowles career and, and of course also on the Isengard releases. But usually when the vocals are that weird, it's it's on purpose. Angrier than anger, <laughs> angry Anderson. Yeah, very typical battery uh, battery ending of the song. Isn't this another uh, ditty that comes? Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Little ditty. This is the kind of uh, thing that makes you just want to delete folk metal. Especially when uh, bands are inspired by this and then they start doing those double bass drum stuff and uh, and a lot of... Uh, you know, they play it like they would play some death metal or whatever. It's horrible. Keep it to a minimum, at least. weird that people would actually want to play folk metal, but what they're actually doing is taking all the folk out of it, <laughs> replacing it with some spastic metal. I can't remember it being any um, Dark Throne equipment in, uh, in my living room, the, the rehearsal place, the studio for, uh, for these recordings. Uh, at this time, 94 to 95, it, all the equipment must have been Valhalls, like uh, guitar bass stuff, um, effects, pedals, but my drum kit always remained my own. And here in the inner cover, we can see the symbol that I found in a, in a store selling craftsman, craftsmanship in 93. I saw the symbol on a chain to wear around my neck. And um, I just decided that's my symbol. I even printed it here in the, on the inner sleeve and uh, took the song title from Dark Angel. Death is certain, life is not. And I, I also tattooed this on my left upper arm then in 2000 the year 2000 I, I read an interview with uh, Quarthon from Bathory and the interview was from 1998 and I see around his neck he has the same fucking symbol which means both of us saw the symbol liked it a lot and decided to wear it because we of course didn't never had any contact it would be very out of line for me to contact Corton and go like, I'm your fan and blah blah blah, I respect what you do like people always do to me I, I don't understand why they do it, idolism should be abolished ABOLISHED Coming right up now is probably my fave song ever done for Isengard. And also you can hear on this some sometimes people call me the drummer of Darkron and I'm not I'm not a fucking drummer, okay? Uh, on this song you could hear that uh, the instrument I, I really 
have passion for is bass, actually. <laughs> Drums are not important. The bass playing is important. This is probably my best folk metal song, but I wouldn't call it folk metal. It's more Viking metal, yeah? And the uh, bass playing is inspired by the bassist of Uriah Heep. The bass playing on Sweet Freedom with Uriah Heep. I like music uh, very inspired by Bathory's Hammer Heart or uh, Twilight of the Gods album from 89 91. Lyrics again taken from Norwegian uh, poets, so uh, they will not be printed. There's a reason why I chose just to have two two lyrics printed on this album. So you gotta respect that. I gotta respect my choice from from back then too. Just have the poem in front of me and improvise. Drums inspired by some Candlemas song from the first album. The the hi hat thing I do here. You know the Epicus Dumicus Metallicus album from Candlemas '86 always had a huge influence on me. It still has, I guess. The epic doom metal uh, holy shrine, man. <laughs> check the bass, check the bass. Title means over the more so desolate they sing the desolation. Probably the atmosphere I want to create too musically on this. The moors, the uh, wide outlook, all that thing. <laughs> Struggling on the vocals here. Just improvising the whole thing like that, I didn't make it easy uh, on myself. But at least I, I know that there's a nerve in the in the vo vocal uh, vocal delivery.
so it sound real and it sound fresh not rehearsed not cursed Yeah, and the extra vocals laid down by um, Aldra and Vikutnik. I, of course, had to, when I had the vocal track done, I have to jump them in on the same vocal track just because I just had one vocal track to work with. So this is um, more or less more black metal feeling. <laughs> Kotnik always uh, took pride in having uh, the ability to make really long black metal cries and that was one of his all-time records, <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> Tried to sing this first after like 12 beers. Came back the, the next day, tried to listen to the results. Not good. Tried with six beers, then better. And this is exactly the type of vocals I really don't like anymore at all. Probably not many weeks after I did this either. I was too happy with it you know it was what it was like anyway Porthon did those kinds of vocals way better on under the sign of the black mark album already in 86 so go listen to that instead Practice at home! <laughs> it wasn't more than a week ago we listened to Under the Sign of, uh, of the Black Mark um, in the car going hiking with three metal punks from Sweden. So if you haven't already got Under the Sign of the Black Mark by Bathory, you should just immediately get it. The riffs under here really inspired by Bathory as well. Come to think of it, there's a whole lot of Bathory on, on uh, this season, Arsgard album. And I've said it before too, what he did with those Viking albums, Hammerheart and Twilight of the Gods, was just the opposite of what everyone else in the scene did. He was uh, the man against the world, and that's what I respect. Don't tell me it's gonna be a fast part now. brother here we go can I go with a long watering drum beats on top of really melodic riffs not a good idea, it's better with a tempo that uh, Varik uh, in Bursum usually did with these kind of riffs, play it slower on the drums, has way better effects. 
It was really uh, a mistake I felt I did at that time, like 93, 94, 95, when I'd make songs for Dark Throne 2. I, I just couldn't help myself when it was a lot of slow stuff. I'd have to have like a fast part too. I don't know, I, I probably saw it from the outside, feeling that people would think it was too monotone or something. So I just wanted some variation. But it was not a good idea. I should have just kept one song, one tempo fast, one song, just slow, like that, it's always better. Fucking hate those vocals, man. Probably inspired, yeah, by Quarthon. Uh, some from Dead from Mayhem. Some Master's Hammer stuff, maybe. It's just those fans, those vocalists, great, but just don't copy it like this. Not a good idea. Yeah, now imagine those lyrics sung on 12 beers instead of the 6 beers I had here. God damn it. Must have been a riot. That's a rather good riff. Uh, if it was play it like that on the drums. Anyway, I'm damn glad that uh, Peaceville wants to re-release this stuff because this has been not so uh, accessible. But now I hope people can get it easily. This album. And here to show the thrash metal side of things. Black Thrash never, never, never fucking died. But in the 90s, bands like Aura Noir and Inferno were given a hard time because it wasn't trendy to play Black Thrash at the time. Fuck the whole scene for that. Aura Noir and Inferno fucking ruled in 94, 95 and whatnot until that whole Black Thrash thing was trendy again in, in the Zero Zeros. Fuck the scene, man. Unfortunately, some uh, black metal riffs also found its way into this song, like this part here. Unnecessary! It's 
To the black stretch and hurry up and buy destructions uh, infernal overkill if you do not have it 1985 finest there is So what I feel is that these black metal parts don't really give me much. I'm just always longing for the song to go back into black thrash mode. Yes! Alright! And this whole step it all just been taken away By the push I told him I did the Tulu The universe opens its eyes It's strange to be Bring it home again. We're wrapping it up, <laughs> wrapping it up right now. Thank you for listening. I'm out of here. I haven't already got under the sign of the black mark by Bathory. You should just immediately get it. The riffs under here really inspired by Bathory as well. Come to think of it, there's a whole lot of Bathory on, on uh, this season, Arsgard Isle. And I've said it before too, what he did with those Viking albums, Hammerheart and Twilight of the Gods, was just the opposite of what everyone else in the scene did. He was uh, the man against the world, and that's what I respect. Don't tell me it's going to be a fast part now. Oh, brother, here we go. Can I go with a long watering drum beats on top of really melodic riffs? Not a good idea, it's better with a tempo that uh, Vodic uh, in Bursum usually did with these kind of riffs, play it slower on the drums, has way better effect. It was really uh, a mistake I felt I did at that time, like 93, 94, 95, when I make songs for Dark Throne 2. I, I just couldn't help myself when it was a lot of slow stuff. I'd have to have like a fast part too. I don't know, I, I probably saw it from the outside, feeling that people would think it was too monotone or something. So I just wanted some variation. But it was not a good idea. I should have just kept one song, one tempo fast, one song, just slow, like that, it's always better.
but many times there have been like playing mistakes that are of course not on purpose uh, in, in Dark Gnome's career and, and of course also on the Eastern Guard releases but usually when the vocals are that weird it's it's on purpose Angrier than anger, <laughs> Angry Anderson. Yeah, very typical battery, uh, battery ending of the song. Isn't this another uh, ditty that comes? Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Little ditty. This is the kind of uh, thing that makes you just want to delete folk metal. Especially when uh, bands are inspired by this and then they start doing those double bass drum stuff and... Uh, and a lot of... Uh, you know, they play it like they would play some death metal or whatever. It's horrible. Keep it to a minimum, at least. weird that people would actually want to play folk metal, but what they're actually doing is taking all the folk out of it, <laughs> replacing it with some spastic metal. remember it's being any um, Dark Throne equipment in uh, in my living room, the, the rehearsal place, the studio for uh, for these recordings uh, at this time 94 to 95 it, all the equipment must have been Valhalls, like uh, guitar bass stuff um, effects pedals, but my drum kit always remain my own And here in the inner cover, we can see the symbol that I found in a, in a store selling craftsman, craftsmanship in 93. I saw the symbol on a chain to wear around my neck, making it a bit more epic. Quite enjoyable, actually. How I fitted all those things, even the synthesizer, into four tracks, I actually can't tell you. <laughs> It's um, pure drama when you sing off key like that just to enhance the effects and the, the vibe. But many times there have been like playing mistakes that are of course not on purpose uh, in, in Dark Gnome's career and, and of course also on the Eastern Guard releases. But usually when the vocals are that weird it's it's on purpose angrier than anger <laughs> angry anderson yeah very typical battery uh, battery ending 
of a song. Isn't this another uh, ditty that comes? Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Little ditty. This is the kind of uh, thing that makes you just want to delete folk metal. Especially when uh, bands are inspired by this and then they start doing those double bass drum stuff and uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, they play it like they would play some death metal or whatever. It's horrible. Keep it to a minimum, at least. Weird that people would actually want to play folk metal, but what they're actually doing is taking all the folk out of it, <laughs> replacing it with some spastic metal. I'm having a beer now, as it were. Yep. Uh, typical sort of mid riff, mid part riff that, middle part riff that Storm of Evil, the song from Winter Skugge has. But here with some synthesizers as well, making it a bit more epic. Quite enjoyable, actually. How I fitted all those things, even the synthesizer, into four tracks, I actually can't tell you. <laughs> Don't remember. That is um, pure drama when you sing off key like that just to enhance the effects and the, the vibe. But many times there have been like playing mistakes that are, of course, not on purpose in, in Dark Knowles' career and, and, of course, also on the Eastern Guard releases. But usually when the vocals are that weird, it's, it's on purpose. <laughs> Angrier than anger, <laughs> Angry Anderson. Very typical battery, uh, battery ending of the song. Isn't this another uh, ditty that comes? Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Little ditty. This is the kind of uh, thing that makes you just want to delete folk metal. Especially when uh, bands are inspired by this and then they start doing techniques, everything. That's why it sounds so scruffy. <laughs> the album cover was a photo taken by Satyr on a trip he set up for us in uh, September of uh, 94 to go to Pilarguri Toppen, also known from the seminal folk album uh, from the Norwegian band called Folk from the 70s. And uh, that's really my hard line when it comes to folk rock. It, it's absolutely fantastic. Folk rock from the 60s and 70s, great. Folk rock, great. Folk metal should, in most cases, be most cases be deleted 
I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's a horrible form of music, actually. And I might have contributed to that. I might also have contributed to make folk some cool or decent folk metal songs that aren't spastic and then merry and, uh, and all that junk that came later on in the, in the 90s. I, uh, I reckon Skyclad was the first uh, folk metal act and Isengard was probably the second. I don't count the Battery Viking albums as that is a, a style on its own. But what this track is inspired by uh, kind of beats me. Probably, probably some Bathory-ish. Um, yeah, definitely Bathory-ish. But then with clear vocals. Then there were no more days. This is Aldran from Dirt, I'm Scott. Thanks, man. A song that's really akin to the stuff on the first Isengard album. Or Isengard, as some would pronounce this band name. Probably the first song recorded for, for this uh, release. As usually, it's recorded on Necrohell Studio, the studio uh, that the guys from Valhall bought, mini studio, four tracks. They bought it in 87, and I started lending it in, in 89 and recorded on it until, yeah, 1995. Probably the, f the, f the, the, the freshest song on, on this <laughs> release or, uh, release or um, the newest one was the last one I ever recorded myself um, on that studio. Probably. As usual, the, uh, the technique of, of uh, doing a solo project like this is I have to make the songs first on uh, guitar um, and then I have to memorize it in my head uh, as I do the uh, drums first. Drums should always be first when doing solo stuff like this. Drums should always be first. Anyway, never play drums after the guitars or something like that. That's just plain stupid. It doesn't work. Then I just have to do the uh, the drums, and when the drum track is uh, is laid down, then you know just do the guitars and the bass and the vocals. Usually I have some beers when I uh, do the vocals, and no beers on uh, on the other instruments. I'm having a beer now, as it were. Yep. 
I also tattooed this on my left upper arm. Then in 2000, the year 2000, I, I read an interview with uh, Quarthel from Bathory. And the interview was from 1998. And I see around his neck, he has the same fucking symbol. Which means both of us saw the symbol, liked it a lot, and decided to wear it. Because we, of course, didn't, never had any contact. It would be very out of line for me to contact Quarthel and go like, I'm your fan, and blah, 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 I respect what you do. Like people always do to me. I, I don't understand why they do it. Idolism should be abolished. ABOLISHED! Coming right up now is probably my fave song ever done for Isengard and also you can hear on this some sometimes people call me the drummer of Darkthrone and I'm not I'm not a fucking drummer okay uh, on this song you could hear that uh, the instrument I, I really have passion for is bass actually <laughs> drums are not important the bass playing is important this is probably my best folk metal song but I wouldn't call it folk metal it's more viking metal yeah and the uh, bass playing is inspired by the bassist of Uriah Heep. The bass playing on Sweet Freedom with Uriah Heep. I like. Music uh, very inspired by Bathory's Hammerheart or uh, Twilight of the Gods album from 89, 91. <laughs> Lyrics again taken from Norwegian uh, poets, so uh, they will not be printed. There's a reason why I chose just to have two, two lyrics printed on this album. So, gotta respect that. I gotta respect my choice from, from back then too. 